is there such thing as too much failure? Is there such thing as, well, you know what? We're focusing way too much on the failure part and that growth part. It's like, I've, I, I don't know if you've ever heard this, but people who like to write lists and have that OCD of constantly writing lists, they're over, over and over again writing lists, but they're not getting anything done. It's right. the same. I'm not saying it's the same thing as failure, <laughs> but when you constantly point out the failure and trying to get the athlete to succeed, you're not actually getting them to succeed. You're, you're giving them a negative mindset and putting them in the wrong frame of mind. Yeah. You know, I've, I've heard this awful thing from a coach one time who was pretty hypercritical. He's like, well, if you kick a dog long enough, the dog thinks you're petting it. And I just, yeah. that's like such a horror. I'm like, gosh, that's, you know, and, and whether, whether, you know, we, we definitely have generational differences, right? Like the way our society was 30, 40 years ago, 20 years ago, it was completely different than now. So Yes, there is a completely different way generationally than you need to coach athletes. And typically athletes today and young young people today do not respond the same way to criticism as they did forever ago. And, and whether that's a social media thing for comparison or whatever that is. So there's all this research that comes out where, hey, hyper-focusing on the negative, hyper-focusing on the failure is not positive anymore. How can we continue to get into a growth mindset where growth mindset being We've equipped the athlete with tools in order to handle failure. We have equipped yeah. the athlete with tools in order to progress themselves. And now they have a failure and it's, you know, it's this newfound confidence, not this false confidence where they just don't think they're ever going to fail. It's this confidence in knowing they're going to fail and that they can still handle it. Um, and I think that is where we want to get to. It's, it, it does us no good pointing out the wrong. I mean, any, anybody on social media can go look at someone's swing and be like, well, they're doing this. That doesn't make you a great coach. That makes you really good at an I spy game, right? Like what's the difference <laughs> yeah. between these two? So for us as coaches, we need to really self, you know, what working, you know, really pushing an athlete and working through failures one day is going to be very different for an athlete another day. Um, and, you know, for, for parents of females, um, and for coaches of females, when that girl is on her period, she's not going to be able to handle failure the same way as she is the, in, in two weeks. It just isn't the case. Some people are going to be completely affected mood, emotionally, whatever that may be. And people can say like, oh, no big deal. It's, it's a big deal for some athletes where they're just like, they're not in a good place hormonally. They're not in a good place physically. And all of a sudden you have a coach pointing out failure after failure, challenging them like crazy. And they're just not up for that at that time. Yeah, I think that that you mentioned the hormonal issues with with women. I shouldn't say issues. I, I apologize, but but you get my my gist. But there's also the social media aspect to it as well, where everybody compares themselves. Adults do, it. and this wasn't around when when you and I played. We're not all that old, but everybody does it now. Everybody compares themselves outside of sports to other people on social media. What they're doing on, especially Instagram. Instagram has mm -hmm. turned into what Facebook used to be, which was like awful you know everybody compare and it's it's horrible for athletes in all sports because all they do is compare each compare each other to the next person and they compare this swing or they point out this swing over and over again and it's really it has the potential to create a very negative and toxic atmosphere and that's where i think coaches have to sort of and you know you would know better than me but sort of have to tell their athletes to kind of try and turn off the Instagram, turn off the social media, stop the comparing and focus on your goals and what you need to do because you get nowhere when you're being compared or you're comparing yourself to somebody else. Sure. That's the thief of joy, right? Like, yeah. cause, cause you could have, uh, right. So think about what's too much failure. You could go into a session, have a phenomenal session, the appropriate mm -hmm. amount of failure, learn these failure recovery tools, whatever. But your perception is that someone else is not failing like you are. And that, you know, in order to be the best, I can't, I feel way more consistent. I need to hit, you know, all of these balls on the, as a line drive, whatever it may be. And now no matter how good of a session you just had, you're never going to be happy with it, right? You're going to, you're going to view it as a failure. So how, how positive is that? Um, yeah, I, it, it is, I, I, I've mentioned, I don't, I don't envy, I do not envy the social media craze that my that my athletes have to deal with but i do think athletes are starting to become a little bit more aware of what's healthy and unhealthy social media habits um i think people in general are and and i had an athlete one day say you know what i am just shutting it down for a little bit I, I need to you know i just found myself non-stop going to it and she's like i just need to shut it down so yeah i mean sometimes we just need a little 
social media cleanse, I guess, just to yeah. back up a little bit. <laughs> well, if you're not on the social media cleanse, again, you can follow us at Jim Tara and at coach <laughs> underscore Cassie RB on Instagram at coach Cassie RB mm-hmm. on Twitter. Yeah. I, it's, it's really a shame what athletes have to have to go through when it, when it comes to comparison, you know, again, you mentioned the, the, the thief of joy and, and high schoolers now having to, to, um, see their their classmates or, or people that they may compete against at other schools getting these these recruiting trips and i don't know what whatever I, I again i'm not in that age bracket anymore i don't know what teenagers and and what young adults 18 to 22 say are posting on instagram you know when it comes to athletics but I, it, it does affect your training because you're comparing mm-hmm. and that's that's in your mind and you're not focusing on yourself and that singularity focus of trying to get better Sure. It takes away from your intent. It takes away from yeah. just your ability to, to just be like, okay, this is exactly where I am right now. This is exactly where I'm supposed to be. I'm doing everything I can to get one day better today. And that's it. Instead, we're thinking, well, I should be here. And when all of a sudden that, you know, where I currently am and where I think I should be gets further and further away, we just fill the middle with anxiety and doubt. And, you know, it, it just even, even, especially when people get hurt, I have athletes who get hurt, who like are scrolling through and being like, Oh, all these people are getting weeks ahead of me. And instead, you know, the obstacle is the way where you currently are is exactly where you should be. There's all these other things you could be working on that they are missing out on. They don't even get a chance to miss the game, right? You know, you, you get to miss the game when you're hurt, you get to rehab certain things, you get to work on the mental game. Anyway, 